Hello again, and welcome to another lesson on quadratic equations. By now, you should be able to solve basic quadratic equations. In this lesson, we will look at more challenging quadratic equations. Let's join Omashni as she goes through these. Okay, now here is a more challenging example for you. Don't worry, all it needs is that you think about different ways of factorizing. Solve for p if 4p squared minus 2p minus 12 is equal to 0. Did you notice that I used p in this example? This is just to remind you that we don't always have to use x values. I could have given you an equation using any letter symbols. So far, we have used equations with x in them so that we could easily look at their graphs. Equations, on the other hand, can use any variables. Right. Back to the equation. Have a look at it. Is it quadratic? Yes, it is a quadratic. It has three terms and the highest power used is 2. P is raised to the power of 2. You could factorize straight away into two brackets, but do you notice the common factor of 2? By removing this common factor first, you make the trinomial easier to work with. So taking out the common factor of 2, we get 2 multiplied by 2p squared minus p minus 6 is equal to 0. Now what happens to this 2? We have two factors multiplied here to give 0. 2 and all the terms in this bracket, these are the two factors. This means that 2 could equal to 0 or this bracket is equal to 0, but we know that 2 can never equal to 0, so we can easily divide this whole equation by 2 on both sides. This gives us 2p squared minus p minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we are left with our quadratic equation, which we know factorizes to two brackets. 2p squared factorizes into 2p and p. Now, at this stage, it doesn't matter which order we put this. We could easily have put p and 2p here, but for now, we will work with this. The next thing we need to do is to find the factors of negative 6, but be careful. When we put the numbers in here and here, when we multiply out and add the terms, it must take us back to this middle term of minus 1p. So the factors of negative 6 that we could use is negative 1 multiplied by positive 6, negative 6 multiplied by positive 1, negative 2 multiplied by positive 3, or negative 3 multiplied by 2. Let's try them all. There aren't too many options here, especially if we have them all ready to test. So which of these factors will work? Remember, our original equation was 2p squared minus p minus 6 is equal to 0. Now to test. 2p multiplied by p gives me 2p squared. Negative 1 multiplied by positive 6 gives me negative 6. Now let's check the middle term. 2p multiplied by positive 6 gives me positive 12. Negative 1 multiplied by p gives me negative 1p. So 12p minus 1p gives me 11p, which is not the middle term. So this equation is wrong. Let's try this one. them all and none of them work. Did you also find that? Look carefully again. We haven't tried all the options. We need to try each number in a different bracket. In this, we have minus 1 and plus 6. Here, we have the plus 6 and minus 1. Do you see that they swapped around? Is there one that works? Can you see which one it is? So, this one is the right answer. Do you see 2p times minus 2 is minus 4p plus 3 times p which is 3p. Minus 4p plus 3p gives me minus 1p which is what we had here. 
at last. So now we can say that 2p plus 3 multiplied by p minus 2 is equal to 0. You may be wondering if there's a shorter way to get this answer. Do you really need to write out each possible set of factors every time? That does seem a long way around, I agree. Now many people have found this next method that I'm going to show you very helpful. First let's write down the equation we are working with, which is 2p squared minus p minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we know this quadratic equation factorizes to two brackets, which I'm going to write here. On this side, I will find the factors of 2p squared. I'll write 2p and p here. On this side, we will work out the factors of minus 6. Now, there are many possible factors of minus 6. Let's work them out now. It could be positive 1 times negative 6, negative 1 times positive 6, 2 times negative 3, or negative 2 times positive 3, 3 times negative 2, or negative 3 times positive 2, and 6 times negative 1, and our last set of factors, negative 6 times positive 1. Now we need to make sure that we get the middle term. So let's choose or work with our first set of factors. 1 and negative 6. Now, I'm going to multiply this and this. 1 times p is 1p. 2p times negative 6 is negative 12p. And I'm going to add these two factors together and see whether it gets us to the middle term. 1p minus 12p gives me minus 11p, which is not the middle term. So these first set of factors are incorrect. Now let's use our second set of factors, which is 2 and negative 3. 2p times negative 3 gives me negative 6p. 2 times p gives me 2p. 2p minus 6p gives me minus 4p, which is not the middle term again. So this set of factors is also not correct. Can you see that we use the same diagram without writing every possible set of factors? Without writing down all the possibilities, you can try them out in your head. You should get to the one that works. So let's try our next set of factors, 3 and minus 2. If we multiply out 2p multiplied by minus 2 gives me minus 4p. 3 times p gives me 3p. 3p minus 4p gives me minus 1p, which is the middle term. So our factors 2p plus 3 and p minus 2 are correct. Let's write that down. 2p plus 3, which you're reading 2p plus 3 coming from here, and p minus 2 coming from there, p minus 2. So these are our correct factors. Right, we have factorized the trinomial, so now we can say that 2p plus 3 multiplied by p minus 2 is equal to 0. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better give you an example to do for yourselves. Here is one. Solve for a if 6a squared plus 28a minus 48 is equal to 0. Now write it down and see if you can do it as we do it. We first need to identify a common factor out of all three terms. Then we divide through by the common factor. Now I see that the common factor is 2, so each of these terms need to be divided by 2. 6a squared divided by 2 gives me 3a squared plus 28a divided by 2 gives me 14a, 48 divided by 2 gives me 24, 
and 0 divided by 2 gives me 0. Now remember, 0 divided by 2 is still just 0. No matter how much you divide up nothing, you still have nothing. Now, I know this trinomial factorizes to two brackets. I also know that the first term in both these brackets will consist of the factors of 3a squared. So I write 3a here and a here. We need to find these numbers. Let's use the method I have just shown you. We need all the factors of 24 in the last place of each bracket. Now that is a lot of factors to work with, but if you use a step-by-step -step approach, you will find the factors that work. Now we know that we need 14a from multiplying out these brackets. We know we need a middle term of positive 14a. So, did you get the correct factors of minus 24 to be minus 4 and positive 6? Let's multiply out and check. 3a multiplied by 6 gives me 18a. Minus 4 times a gives me minus 4a. Minus 4a plus 18a gives me positive 14a, which is the middle term. So our correct factors are 3a minus 4 and a plus 6. So our correct factors are 3a minus 4 multiplied by a plus 6 and we can solve this. So there we have it. Remember, we solve the equation 6a squared plus 28a minus 48 is equal to 0. We found the roots of this equation to be a equals 4 divided by 3 or a equals to negative 6. That's it for now, grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the equations and inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.